and the U.S. leads Western countries in promising more weapons for Ukraine, including air defense systems. Now, the UN General Assembly has voted overwhelmingly to condemn Russia's attempts to annex four regions of Ukraine. Only four countries voted with Russia, Belarus, North Korea, Syria and Nicaragua. Meanwhile, the US and its NATO allies have reaffirmed their support for Ukraine in the face of intensifying Russian aggression, promising to send military hardware to Kyiv for as long as it takes. In the past few days, Putin has given us all another grim preview of a future in which the appetites of aggressive autocrats outweigh the rights of peaceful states. We're going to do everything we can, uh, as fast as we can, to help the Ukrainian forces get the capability they need to protect the Ukrainian people. For his part, Vladimir Putin has accused the West of stoking the global energy crisis, suggesting that damage to the Nord Stream gas pipeline was the result of what he called international terrorism. With Mr Putin under increasing pressure both at home and abroad, our Russia editor Steve Rosenberg considers what his next move might be. What will Vladimir Putin do next in Ukraine? What is he thinking? His special military operation has not gone according to plan. But U-turns, that's not his style. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. This is... At an event in Moscow, classic Putin. The Kremlin leader painting Russia as the victim and the authorities in Kiev as terrorists. Keep in mind, though, that it was Russia that invaded Ukraine. I don't follow them. Konstantin Remchukov's newspaper has criticized Russian officials for nuclear saber rattling during the special operation. He says Putin wants a new world order and don't expect de escalation anytime soon. He is authoritarian leader of a nuclear power. He is unchallenged leader in this country. And he has some strong beliefs and perceptions which drive him crazy and uh, he started to believe that this is existential. Would Putin really go nuclear in Ukraine? He's dropped unsubtle hints. Days before the Russian invasion, the president oversaw massive nuclear drills. He's since warned the West he's not bluffing about the nuclear option. In Putin's mind, for him, Defeat is unimaginable. If you'd run a country for 22 years like Vladimir Putin has, and if you'd silenced all your critics and crushed the opposition like Putin has, you may well feel, like Putin appears to feel, that you will always end up a winner. To acknowledge that any other outcome is possible means facing up to an unpalatable fact that you are not invincible. And in a country with no checks or balances, and where the leaders don't feel accountable to the public, there are few constraints on Kremlin decision-making. The problem is that the system which was created in this 30 years didn't create the society. There is a lot of very nice people in Russia. I think you, you met them, but there is no civil society. That's why Russia can't resist. For now, resistance to the Kremlin is coming from Ukraine and the West. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Officials in Ukraine say the capital, Kyiv, and other cities have been hit by more Russian shelling overnight. Let's find out the very latest with our correspondent, Hugo Bashega, who's in Kyiv for us now. Hugo, very good morning to you. Just bring us up to date with the, the latest developments. Yeah, so we had an update from uh, the governor saying that a village outside uh, Kiev was uh, hit by a kamikaze drone earlier today. This is a drone that has been provided by the Iranians to the Russians, and Russian forces have been using uh, these drones to attack cities and villages across the country. We, all, we also had an update from the mayor of Mykolaiv, which is a city in the south of the country that's been frequently targeted by Russian forces. It is relatively close to the front line. Uh, the mayor said uh, Russian shell 
shelling overnight hit a residential area and an 11 year old boy was rescued earlier this morning but they've also confirmed that at least one person has been killed as a result of this attack that happened uh, in the early hours of the morning now also today the uh, defense secretary has announced that the uk will be providing air defense missiles to ukraine this is the kind of equipment that the ukrainians say they need to protect uh, cities from the threat of russian missiles and this is happening ahead of a meeting of nato defense ministers that is happening uh, today in brussels and the ukrainians have been saying that these attacks show how the russians are responding to recent uh, defeats on the battlefield by attacking civilian sites and infrastructure across the country